Om Ajnana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shremati Bhaktivedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Deve Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadigor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare so we're going through the fifth, uh, Canto 7, Chapter 9, Prahlad Maharaj is offering prayers to Lord Nisringadev. So Prahlad Maharaj was glorifying Lord Nisringadev and he described how Lord Nisringadev is everything. He is the cause of everything and he is the effect. So, in the prayer tonight, Prahlad Maharaj is describing how all the different elements are also the Supreme Lord. Right, we have the gross elements first of all. We have earth and water and fire and air and ether. That is also the Supreme Lord. Then there's the sense objects, the sense objects like taste and sight and smell and touch and sound. That's also Krishna. Or, and then there's the life airs within the body, there's life airs. This is also Krishna. Then we have the, the senses, the five senses, like the eyes, the tongue, the nose, the, the skin, and the ears. And then you have the subtle, the subtle body, the mind, and the false ego and consciousness. So in this way, Prahlad Maharaj is telling Lord Nisringadev, is that you are everything, everything gross and subtle. Then 
And so whatever we talk about in this world, whatever we use our tongue to describe, it is actually nothing but the Supreme Lord. So all the material elements, everything is just simply the Supreme Lord. So of course there's a, we have to understand properly what Prahlad means when he says like this. There's a, a type of philosophy called pantheism, which is another form of atheism, where they say the world is God. Hmm. Prahlad Maharaj understands the Supreme Lord is everywhere, He's in everything. But that doesn't mean that everything is God. Right. He, he's in everything, but it doesn't mean that everything is God. It's described in, in chapter 10 of the Bhagavad Gita. We read about Krishna describing his Vibhuti Yoga. Krishna is describing how he's the sound in ether and his ability in man. He said, of rivers, of rivers I am the Ganga, of beasts I am the lion. Of mountains, I am Meru. Of immovable, immovable things, I am the Himalayas. And this is all Krishna's vibhuti. Krishna goes on to describe many vibhutis. Right, the tenth chapter is called Vibhuti Yoga. So Krishna gives a, a very detailed description of his vibhutis. But then at the end of the chapter, Lord Krishna says, what, what need is there, O Arjuna, for all this knowledge? You don't need to know all this knowledge. Krishna says, with a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support the entire creation. Krishna is saying, the single fragment of myself, I support, and what is that fragment? That single fragment which pervades everything, that is the super soul. Krishna 
So that one super soul expands infinitely into unlimited forms, into everything. Hmm. But Krishna also expands himself through his Brahman potency. Hmm. In Srimad Bhagavatam, in the first canto, second chapter, it is described that the absolute truth is called Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. Paramatma and Bhagavan. In Srimad Bhagavatam, second chapter. Second chapter, very important chapter in the first canto. Many devotees, they will memorize all the slokas there in the second chapter. Right, if you, if you like to learn slokas, then the second chapter of the first canto is very good. There are many verses there to memorize. So Sutta Goswami describes the absolute truth. He says, Vadanti tat tat vam vidam tat vam yajnanam advayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavan iti shabhyate. Sutta Goswami said, Learned transcendentalists describe this absolute truth as Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. Prahlad Maharaj is talking to Lord Nishingadev and he is describing how the Supreme Lord is everything. Because Prahlad is a pure devotee, so he can see the Lord everything, in everything, everywhere. Right. His atheistic father was asking him, where is this God? Where is he? Is he in here? And Prahlad said, yes, he's there, father. So Prahlad Maharaj, he's Uttama Adhikari, he's the topmost devotee. He can see the Lord everywhere, in everything. When they put him in the, in the, in the pit with all the poison snakes, Prahlad Maharaj saw the Lord in the heart of all these snakes. So in every situation, Prahlad Maharaj can simply see everything in relation to the Lord. But the Lord appears in different ways. We said there's the Brahman, there's the Paramatma and there's Bhagavan. Right? 
So when Prahlad Maharaj says, earth, water, fire, air, ether is all the Lord, he means this is all the Lord's energy, this is his Brahman. There's the Lord and then there's the potency of the Lord and it's all absolute, it's all one, but there's a difference. So, there's a Vedic statement which is very popular by the Mayavadis headed by Shankaracharya which says Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma everything is Brahman. So the Mayavadis, they don't accept that there can be energies. They say, no, there's only one energy. They don't accept there can be many energies. And they don't accept that there can be the Supreme Lord. The Mayavadis, they say, the Lord and the living entities and the material world are all illusion. And they say, Brahman Satyam Jagat Mitya, that the Brahman, only the Brahman is truth and everything else is false, illusion. So because of this, this kind of teaching of Shankaracharya, this is why atheism became everywhere spread. People became atheistic, they couldn't accept that there's God. And they, then they simply became sinful because they said, you know, we, we're all illusion, so everything I do is illusion, so I can do anything I like, it's all illusion. So they are called Mayavadis because they say Maya is greater than God. Because everyone is bewildered by Maya. So Maya must be the supreme power. So they put they're, these people who have this philosophy, they, they're known as Mayavadis. So Shankaracharya propagated this teaching and he did this under the order of the Supreme Lord. It is described in the Padma Purana. Mayavada asachastram prachanam bodhamuchate. Mayeva vihitan devi kalo brahmana murtina. This is a verse spoken by Lord Shiva to his wife Parvati or Durga. And he's telling her, in the Kali Yuga, I take the form of a brahmana and I come and teach this Mayavadi philosophy. Padma Purana ma bataye ko cha, Shiva ji dwara Parvati lai bataun vaye ko cha ki, ki Kali Yuga ma ma avatar linchu nastik vara, Brahma le Mayavadi sastra prachar garchu, ande. 
Yes, it's Mayavada Asat Shastra. This is not a real philosophy. It's Asat Shastra. It's an illusion. And, it, and it's described as Prachanam Bodham, means covered Buddhism. It is Buddhism in a disguised form. Right. The Buddhists, they teach, they, their teach, their philosophy is called voidism. So they say everything, there, there's not, everything is illusion. Mm. Just like Prabhupada, when we offer prayers to Prabhupada, we say nirvishesha shunyavadi paschacha desha tarini. So nirvishesha, this is uh, the, the, the Buddhism, and, oh, 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 this is the uh, mayavadi, and uh, sunyavadi, this is the voidism, the Buddhism. So what mayavadi, the nirvishesha, and the Buddhism, the uh, sunyavadi. So, Srila Prabhupada personally gave us this mantra by which we can offer our respectful obeisances to him that he is preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya to defeat this Mayavadi and this impersonal philosophy and Buddhist philosophy. So the Buddhists, their teaching, everything is void, nothing, zero. Their philosophy is zero. Everything is nothing. Everything is Nothing is real. They, they say, we are not real, the world is not real, and there's no God anywhere. Nothing is real. Everything is illusion. But Shankaracharya, he changed that philosophy a bit. He made everything is not zero, he said everything is Brahman. And he said, instead, everything is not zero, he said, everything is one. And he spoke about the oneness of everything. That oneness is Brahman. So, Shankaracharya, in this way, he brought back the Vedas and he got rid of the Buddhism. But later on the Vaishnava Acharyas came, Ramanuja Acharya and Madhva Acharya and Nimbarka Acharya and they preached their philosophy. Right, the chief, one, uh, Vash, Ramanuja, he, he taught this uh, Vashista Dvaita and Shankaracharya, he taught, he taught Dvaita and Nambarka Acharya, he's also uh, preaching uh, Dvaita Advaita. Ramanuja Acharya, uh, uh, Vashista Dvaita. Vashista Dvaita. Ramanuja Vashista Dvaita. 
Nimbakacharya Dvaita Dvaita. Dvaita And Madhvacharya Dvaita. Madhvacharya Dvaita, not a Dvaita. Dvaita, Dvaita Matri, Dvaita Aina. Dvaita. And then later on Lord Chaitanya came and he brought all the sampradayas together with his teaching of achintya beda beda tattva. And Lord Chaitanya established the real message of the Vedas, right? The real message of the Vedas is to know Krishna. Vedanta Krit Vedavid Eva Chaham. Krishna says in the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita that I am the author, I am the compiler of the Vedas. By all the Vedas I am to be known. So we have to understand that one who is a devotee of Krishna, he not only knows Bhagavan, he will also know Paramatma, he will also know Brahman. They are all different features of the one Supreme Lord. Just like in the Ishopanishad, they speak about the light, the effulgence coming the, from the Lord. Haranmayena patrena satyasya pehitam mukam tadvan pushan pavarno satya dharmaya drishtate. The devotee is praying to the, kindly remove this dazzling effulgence. And the devotee prays, I want to see that, that form of yours. I, I want to see your form. So the light is just the energy coming from the form of the Lord. So the Lord has so many different energies and these energies are all different aspects, features of the Brahman. So if we simply only focus on the Brahman, that is not full realization of the Absolute Truth. If one just simply knows the Brahman and he doesn't know the form of the Lord as Bhagavan, then his realization is not complete. And it means that any time he can fall down into the material world again. There's a verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, spoken by Lord Brahma. Arora krishrena paramta tanta da patanti ado nidrita yasma dangraya. Lord Brahma is describing because of his Vishuddha Buddhaya, because of his impure intelligence, he falls back into the material world. Brahma, 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 Brahma,
करने उन्चन इन्दर को जो अशुद्धता ले करता गिरी उन्दर फेर के उन पर जता मना गिरी भगवान को साक्षात कर करना पाऊं देना पर फेरी बहुत ही संसार में फेरी गिर नू पड़ता है so sometimes we see the big impersonalists, the big Mayavadi, they, they do a lot of austerity, they go to the mountains and, or they go in the jungle and they do a lot of austerity. And after all their austerity then they come back and they take up some welfare activity. They may open a hospital or they may open a school or they may do some home for the children, orphans. So this, this is not spiritual activity, this is welfare, material welfare activity. Initially they had renounced everything, they'd gone away from the world. But then they come back and again take up some worldly activity. Because they don't know what are spiritual activities. They don't know how to engage themselves in activities for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. So this is why, because they're not engaged in devotional service, they take up activities on the material platform. So sometimes people even think that Krishna is coming from the Brahman, that Krishna himself comes from the Brahman, and the Brahman is actually the supreme, superior to Krishna. But this is not supported from the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, Amritasya uh, Vyashyacha Shasvatasya Dharmasya Brahmano hi pratishtaham amrita shyavayasya cha shyasvatasya cha dharmasya sukhasya kantikasya cha. This is the last verse of chapter 14. Vanya Maharajile Prasthangar Janva cha ki Bhagavane Bhagavad Gita ma chaudha adhyaya ma kasari batavnu vaya cha vanera chaudha adhyaya ko antim sulok lai Prasthangar Janva cha. Arjuna wanted to know what he needed to do to overcome the modes of nature. And Lord Krishna described, you have to do devotional service. Krishna said, Mamchayo vaya becharena bhakti yogena sevate sagunam samatijaikam brahma bhuya yakopate. Krishna described that one who engages in my devotional service, he comes to the level of Brahman. Mm. 
And then Krishna goes on to describe what is that Brahman. And Krishna said, Brahmano hi pratishtaham. Krishna says that he is the basis of that Brahman. But these foolish people, they interpret, they say the Brahman is the basis of Krishna. <laughs> Hmm. And then the Brahman is described, the nature of the Brahman is described. And the Brahman is immortal, imperishable, eternal, and the constitutional position of ultimate happiness. So Brahman realization is actually the beginning, the first stage of self-realization. I think all of you devotees have already realized Brahman. Because the Brahman, understanding we're Brahman, means to understand we're not the body, that we're all spirit souls. In the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Brahmano hi, pra, uh, Krishna says, uh, Brahma Buddha Prasanatma. He said, one who has, re, who has realized their Brahman, he is Prasanatma, he becomes a joyful soul. So, if somebody is not a joyful soul, it means they're in the bodily consciousness, they're not in Krishna consciousness. Devotees should always be joyful, they should be fully in Krishna consciousness. And that Krishna consciousness begins, first of all, by understanding we're not the body, and then we have to go on and understand who is the Supreme Brahman. We have to understand our relationship with Krishna, who is the Supreme Brahman. We are tiny parts of the Brahman, and He is the Supreme Brahman. Therefore, we have to engage in devotional service. That Krishna is the Supreme Brahman was described by Arjuna. After Krishna spoke the four verses, the Chatur Sloki verses, which summarize the Bhagavad Gita, then Arjuna declared that Krishna is the Parabrahman. 
चतुर्श्लोकी भगवत गीता तो भगवत तीस श्लोक प्रस्तुत कर सके अर्जुन ने भगवान परम ब्रह्मन बनेर यहाँ संबोधित करजुन सैद परम ब्रह्म परम धाम पवित्रम परम भगवान पुरुषम शस्पथम दिव्यम आदि दैव मझम प्रभु अर्जुन इज प्रेसिंग कृष्णा दैट यू आर द सुप्रीम ब्रह्मान अर्जुन ने श्लोक में बताने हूँ कि तपाई परम पुरुष होने सो अर्जुन इज ही अंडरस्टैंड कृष्णस पोजिशन दैट वी आर टाइनी पार्ट्स ऑफ द ब्रह्मान एंड कृष्णा इज द सुप्रीम ब्रह्मान अर्जुन ने भगवान को उद्देश्य हो कि To give a simple example, a simple example, just like our finger. Our fingers are very valuable, but if one finger is cut off from the the hand, then it is useless. It's not connected to the body anymore. It's useless. यानी एकदम सुंदर उदाहरण दिए कुछ कि The same way, the individual living entity is a part of the supreme Brahman, and we are meant to engage in his service. So it's the duty of the devotee to engage in service, and the easiest service to do in the Kali Yuga is to chant the holy name. Krishna is everywhere. He's in everything, but we cannot see him. In seventh chapter, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said that mata parata ramnanya kinchedasti dhananjaya. Mai sarva midam sotram sutre mani gana eva. Every there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests on me, just like the beads are strung on a thread. Ra Bhagavan Bhagavad Gita ko sato adhyay ma bhanu jagi ma vada ava mati. Kyu vanda aje mati satya aru kepi ni chaina. Jastu prakar le dhaga ma moti uniye ko cha. Tese prakar le sati vini prani aru chan sappe ma ma asri chan na. Just like devotees, we like to wear neck beads. We wear tulsi beads around our neck, kunti mala. But you, you don't, you don't see the thread. You only see the bead. So the same way, Krishna is everywhere in everything, but we don't see him. But If we do devotional service, then we can see him. We we want if we want to see Krishna, he reveals himself to his pure devotees who serve him with love. And the best way to develop that love for Krishna is by chanting His holy name. And to prove this, Prabhupada quotes a verse. 
He's, he quotes that verse where Krishna is saying that I am not in Vaikuntha and I am not in the hearts of the yogis meditating on me, but I am wherever my devotees like Narad are chanting my holy name. And so those intelligent people who have got purified brain, they will chant the holy name of Krishna. But those foolish people, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, he said, I am never manifest to the foolish and the unintelligent. For them I am covered by my yoga maya. So we see the foolish, the unintelligent, the impure intelligence, they have no qualification. To, they don't know about the glories of Lord Krishna. So in this way Prahlad Maharaj is describing how Lord Krishna, how the Supreme Lord, Nasringadev, how he's everywhere in everything and everything is a representation of him. So we will ask if there's any questions. Hare Krishna, unmute Gaurav Sadhguru Anjala. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Dandavat Pranam, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna, Bhagwan Prabhu Ji. Krishna. Mere yada prasna thiyo. Agi Maharaj ne jo bibuti ko baare mein bande unhi thiyo ni. Abu. Ah, kya re? Justo ki bibuti bataunda kiri. अब भगवान ले यो पनी पता हूँ उन जगी माँ पांडव माँ अर्जुन हूँ तर अर्जुन मोहग्रस भागा थे मतलब अब तेज में कृष्ण का सरी उन्हीं भाई यो का सरी बुद्धि में महाराज जी इस हिमाय प्रभु इस क्वेश्चन दे कृष्ण इस एक्सप्लेन आई मैं बी आई मैं बी बुद्धि के बारे में बंदा आगे जो महाराज ने पता हूँ दे so, if he is Arjuna, why is he in an illusion? Well, Krishna is everywhere, right? We said Krishna is everywhere. So, he's in Arjuna. So, he's in the heart of Arjuna. He's in the heart of all living entities. But he gives everyone different opportunities to reciprocate with him. The Lord wants Arjuna to take the part of the conditioned soul so that the Lord can speak the Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna 
मध्य अवस्था में बुलाया रहा है वहाँ लाइ अज्ञान में डाले रहा भगवत गीता प्रस्तुत कराने को लगी वहाँ भगवान ने अर्जुन ने तो स्थिति में बुलाया नहीं बा अर्जुन इस not really an illusion, but Krishna is taking the opportunity to teach all of us by teaching Arjuna. They give the example just like the mother will teach the daughter-in-law by teaching her daughter. Right, the mother-in-law, the, the mother, it's got the daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law is just married and she's come there to the house and she's new in the house, she doesn't know the way the mother does everything. And the daughter-in-law is very sensitive, so the mother doesn't want to chastise her and tell her you did it wrong, but she tells her daughter. And by teaching her daughter, she hopes the daughter-in-law will understand. <laughs> So the same way, Krishna teaching Arjuna. Arjuna is not an illusion, but he's taking the he's playing the part somebody in illusion, so that Krishna can speak the Bhagavad Gita for all of our benefit. Understand? Yes, Guru Maharaj. One more question, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Prabhuji, to Agi. जो संक्रांचारिया के बारे में बताऊँ वो आज़ियों महाराज ले जो अद्वैत अद्वैत बात बनने जो सुन्य बात बोला अद्वैत बात अनि जब बल्ला द्वैत बात आऊँ जब भगवान ले संक्रांचारिया ले एक के जोटी द्वैत बात को आदेश किन दिलवाएगा कि न मायावादी को लागी प्रचार को लागी लगाऊँ वो बनने नहीं so why uh, there is uh, instruction to Sankaracharya uh, instead of Mayavad? Why not he give the instruction to Sankaracharya to teach uh, Advaita Bhat? Well, why not Advaita Bhat? Advaita Bhat is not Advaita Bhat. Why is he not teaching Advaita Bhat? The Lord arranged. It doesn't the, the, because the transition. Remember, he has to bring back the Vedas, so he has to be, defeat the Buddhist philosophy. Because the Buddhists are preaching that nothing is real. Everything is void, zero. They don't speak about God. They don't believe in the existence of a God. Buddha is not God. Buddha is Buddha, and man is man. There's no, and they don't believe in God. <laughs> So Shankaracharya has to defeat this Buddhist philosophy, so he does it by teaching this covered Buddhism. Right, and the Buddhists are saying everything is zero, and Shankaracharya says everything is one. 
just a little change. But he was able to bring back the Vedas. And, and he brought back the Vedic culture and the Varnashram system and good Brahmanas. And good sannyasis, strict sannyasis, renounced people. So Shankaracharya was very clever. He didn't want to make too big a jump because it was, if it's too big a jump, if he was to teach what the Vaishnavas are teaching, it would be too big a change from what the, what, Shankara, what the Buddhists were teaching. It would be difficult for them to take. And so Shankaracharya was to bring, first of all, bring back the Vedas. And then, after they bring back the Vedas, then the Acharyas came to bring the real philosophy of the Vedas. But the people were not ready yet for the Vaishnava philosophy. So Shankaracharya, his philosophy is also atheism, like Buddhism. Because Shankaracharya, he's saying, we're all God, we're all Brahman, we're all one. So if everybody's God, there's no meaning to God anymore. Doesn't mean anything. Hmm. So you have they had to Shankaracharya did it that way because they had to do it gradually. They couldn't immediately bring back the presence of a divine spiritual form. So, little bit at a time. And gradually bring in the Vedas, bring back the Vedic culture, and then the Vaishnava Acharyas, and then Lord Chaitanya. The Acharya has to teach according to the ability of the people to understand. They couldn't understand anymore, so Shankaracharya told them as much as they could understand. Do you understand? Yes, Maharaj. And Maharaj, one more little doubt. Oh. Uh, 
प्रभुजी महाराज सोधिन त अचिन्त्य वेदावेद जो महाप्रभुले प्रचार गर्नु भयो त्यसको व्याख्या कसरी बुझ्ने हाउ डू वी अंडरस्टैंड अचिन्त्य वेदावेद तत्व व्हाट नर्सना व्हाट चेक इन प्रभु टीचर्स व्हाट अचिन्त्य वेदावेद तत्व हाउ डू वी अंडरस्टैंड दैट हाउ डू वी अंडरस्टैंड द चेंज ऑफ वेद वेद तत्व यस यस महाराज वेल Lord Chaitanya is teaching that it is for achintya inconceivable that everything is one and at the same time different from the Lord. We say we are one in quality, different in quantity. Right? Krishna is the supreme Brahman, and we are tiny sparks of the Brahman. That is a chintya beda beda tattva. Uh, this everything is ultimately one with Krishna, but at the same time different from Krishna. Yes, thank you, Maharaji. Ani kiare. ब्रह्म भूत प्रसन्न आत्मा न सोचति न कांचति भन्ने श्लोकलाई महाराजले यो भक्तिको पहिला स्टेप भन्नुभयो नि यो त हामीलाई बहुत उच्च स्टेप लाग्छ यानि सम सर्वेशु भूतेशु मत भक्ति लवते प्रणाम जो सब पहिला सम देखिन तर हामीले आफ्नो बच्चा र अरुका बच्चाले अन्तर देखिन्छ यसको मतलब हामी कृष्ण भावनामा छैनौ एन्ड निमाय प्रभु इज मेन्शन दैट वी हैव एक्सप्लेन इन भगवत गीता सम सर्वेशु भूतेशु मत भक्ति लवते परम ब्रह्म भूत प्रसन्न आत्माको Well, uh, the point is there's devotion in the modes of nature and there is pure devotion so maybe our devotion is mixed with the modes of nature ra bhakti bhane ab hami bhakti sansar ma gun ma mistrit cha ra tesari hamile tyo vibhajan garna thale bhane hamar ko bhakti mistrit bhai raha cha shuddha bhakti bhai ko chai it's We are we are going through the motions of devotional service, but how much have we actually transcended the modes of nature? We have to get free of the modes of nature. Sometimes we do devotional service. We're in dirty. We're we're contaminated, or we're in an angry mood. Sometimes we're doing devotional service. We just want to get distinction. We want people to respect us. Oh, we're very religious. We're very pious. And some, sometimes we're doing devotional service. We just want to get rid of our. sinful reactions from past activities but pure devotional service is done simply for the pleasure of krishna shuddha bhakti jai sirf bhagwan ko prasannata ko lagi matra 
without any desire for any material gain or without any kind of liberation. Right? Right? Devotional service, pure devotional service is described in that way, that it must be without material desire and it must be continuous. So we have to be constantly engaged in Krishna's service. Often we are on, off, we're on, off. Sometimes we're very active, other times we're, you know, I'm not in the mood today, no, I'm not going to chant today, I'm not going to wake up today. So, we're, if we are influenced by the modes, then our devotional service is also influenced by the modes. So, the first stage is prasanatma, Brahma Buddha prasanatma, becoming detached from the body and becoming joyful as a soul. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Any other question? Hare Krishna Guru Mahajan, Dhanavad Pranam. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Last Sunday, somebody have a question. Can we ask in this time? Yeah. How important to Bhakti Sastra? Bhakti Sastra is important. So, I mean, like Krishna, go Prem Bhakti Ma, Kay Sayata Gorcha. Uh, Prabhu is uh, somebody's question in his message, message is how important to learn Bhakti Sastri and if Bhakti Sastri help us develop Krishna consciousness? Well, Srila Prabhupada had suggested that the devotees could organize these kind of courses. It's important for the devotees to get some education in the scriptures. So they may come they may come they may come to classes, you know, maybe once a week or something, they come to class and they sit there, they don't learn hardly anything. But the idea of the Bhakti Shastri is that they will learn the message, they'll get the proper, a proper guidance through the message of the scriptures. We should we should know what is being taught, what, what is Krishna's message, what is being passed on in, these, in the different verses of the scriptures. 
So the Bhakti Shastri very helpful for people. We study the Bhagavad Gita, we study Ishopanishad, nectar of instruction, and part of the nectar of devotion. And in this way you get a good basis of the Krishna conscious philosophy. And there are tests. The devotees have to take part in tests. They have to write answers to questions. And they have to they have to memorize slokas. So it's a very good training. Because often nobody is monitoring, nobody's checking on them how much they're learning. The, they may be coming to class every week and they don't remember anything. So it's a good guide for people who want to get second initiation, who want to get the Brahman initiation, that they should have completed the Bhakti Shastri course. Yeah, you want to get the second initiation, first of all study the Bhakti Shastri course, complete that. And that shows you've made a, a good attempt to study the, the Prabhupada's books. Because one who is a Brahmana, they should know the philosophy. They may be asked to speak, they may be asked to give a class, they should know something. Right, so you want to you want to get second initiation, you study Bhakti Shastri. You want to become a sannyasi, you have to study bhakti by bhav. Bhakti by bhav is studying Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhakti by bhav is studying Srimad Bhagavatam. So it's very good for the devotees to go through these different courses and get more education in Prabhupada's books. You understand? Yes, Guru Maharaj. So I was encouraging devotees in Nepal, it would be good also in Nepal to have Bhakti Shastri course for the devotees. A number of devotees have already gone to Vrindavan and taken part in the Bhakti Shastri course. 
They do it, you can do it in Hindi. But it takes some time. You have to study, you have to put some time into it. But that's good. That's a good use of your time to use it to study Krishna Khan. You need to get this education, you need to learn the philosophy. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandava Pranam, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandava Pranam. Kiri Prabhuji, Mali to Gauku Haptama Mali Suddhini, Jaste Kasele Vanchan Radharani Pranam, Krishna Vanchan, Ani Bhagavan Pranam Krishna, Ani Amili to Jaste Marma Jabda Kiri Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Vani Adit Kosale Chau. Yogar Da Amila Paap Chaki Chau, Na Amila Aparat Lak Chaki Lak Dena Krishna Vani, Jab Nibani to Krishna Vani, Jab Nibani Bhasa Chaki Chau Ani Sima. So Amili Kosele Yelai Chekudu, Ms. Mataji's question, Maharaji, she's, asked, she's questioned that we always chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. It's, we are not chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. It's Krishna means name of Radharani. So it, it means we are chanting the Radharani name. Do we get any benefit in that? We are not chanting a Krishna name fully because of we are chanting a Krishna, not Krishna. So in that case, do we do any offenses or any aprada in that? Well, a lot will just de depend on the, the, the consciousness and the mood. Is the devotee actually thinking to chant the name of Radharani or is he chanting, does he, is he chanting to Krishna? You know, in different parts of the world, people pronounce the name, the holy name of the Lord in different ways. You know, I go to Russia sometimes. In Russia, there's some wonderful devotees there. And there they say, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. And if you know in Thailand also, Brihadbanu will tell you how they chant the name of Krishna in Thailand. And so it, there's no problem because the mood their mood is to Krishna. Krishna is not concerned so much with their pronunciation, but Krishna is looking at their heart. He's thinking, what is their mood in chanting his name? Lord Chaitanya was in Sri Rangam. You know Sri Rangam in South India? There's a big temple, a very big Vaishnava temple of Lord Ranganath there. 
And Lord Chaitanya was spending Chaturmasya there one year and he would go to the temple every day and he saw there was a Brahmin reading the Bhagavad Gita. And so the Brahmana was reading Bhagavad Gita, but Lord Chaitanya could understand the Brahmana was not well educated because he could not pronounce the verses well. And other brahmanas were ridiculing him and laughing at him. But Lord Chaitanya saw that this brahmana was shedding tears. So Lord Chaitanya spoke to him one day and asked him, you know, what are you doing? So the Brahmana said, my guru told me every day I should read the Bhagavad Gita. So I do it. So Lord Chaitanya said, very good. And then Lord Chaitanya said, yet, yeah, but why do you shed tears when you're reading the Bhagavad Gita? And the Brahmana said, when I read the Bhagavad Gita, then I think about how Lord Krishna is so merciful that he became the chariot driver of Arjuna. So thinking of Lord Krishna becoming the chariot of chariot driver of Arjuna, it brings brings tears to my eyes when I think about how the Lord is so merciful to his devotee. So Lord Chaitanya said to the Brahmana, he said, you are the real reader of the Bhagavad Gita. You are the best reader of the Bhagavad Gita. Another time, Srila Prabhupada had one of his Western lady disciples come and he, he told her to recite the Ishopanishad prayers in front of many Indian people. And so after the girl had finished reciting, some people in the audience said, Oh, her pronunciation is not very good. But Prabhupada said, Oh, her pronunciation may not be so good, but her renunciation is very good. 
renunciation is more important than pronunciation. Anyway, you like to pronounce the holy name of the Lord perfectly. You can also instruct people how they should pronounce the holy name. We'll make you the Namacharya of the Holy Name. You can teach everyone how to chant properly. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any other Hare question? Hare Krishna. Tila Gini Devi Das here a question, sir. Oh, yes. So, Moini Mataji, oh? There is Poini. Okay. So no more questions. Okay. Maharaji, just for a moment, Prabhu has some announcement. Yes. Hare Krishna, Jodhi Bani Maharaj ka disable Uru Bani Ununja, Ni Maharaj Bani Khoji Gaurnunja, Agi Bani Abar Doris Kumar Bande Ununja, Ayna, Tapa Uru Nya Aununja, Yog Piche Akri Ma Anmir Gaurera Maharaj Hare Krishna Dhanbad Bani Barna Sakunja, Ni Jodhi Bani Aru Bani Ayna, Anmir Gaurnus Maharaj Yoga Dorsan Gaurnu Maharaj Lai Hare Krishna Dhanbad Barna Amburu Tapa Uru Barna Sakunja, Okay, so we thank all the devotees for their participation. We thank you for listening and for putting questions. And we thank also Brad Banu Prabhu for his translation. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Dandabad Pranam. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.